Uh-huh. Yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are Tur Laser Master 3 sitting right here in front of me and what I have right here is a fire enclosure so we're going to enclose this with fire. Well maybe that's not what that means. I think it's to prevent a fire and I've not taken this out of the box yet and Artur sent this to me to display, no, test, probably, review, yes, play with, definitely. We're going to open this up so we got in here what's all involved in putting this together. Oh, well, looks like there's going to be a little bit of assembly required. We've got a little foam insert in here with some, uh, looks like some flex tubing. Got a little fan. Got a uh, port for the tube. Got some clamps. Zip ties. A little bit of hardware. Interesting box. And looks like the directions are inside this plastic, so we'll get this all unwrapped and get it opened up, see what we got here. Okay, there's a drawstring bag here to keep everything in, and I'm going to have to take everything out of there. There's the cover itself. Then we have, they call these skeletons in their little manual here, so we got some skeletons to play with. Okay, got a little disclaimer here. It, uh, it can only avoid spreading fire. We'll get into that here in a minute about, you know, if you do get a fire on a laser, and I've had one once before, and what can be done. And it, it says a fireproof cloth can be broken down by the laser, so don't laser the cloth. And it gives you a little tips about thin and light objects, and you need to hold down light things that, uh, so they don't blow away. I've had that problem with uh, real thin cork backings. So we'll get into the assembly here next. I was unpacking everything and looking for all the parts and pieces. There's a light tube, LED light strip it's right here. It's actually folded up inside the cover. So you're not missing it, it's just hidden. So you gotta watch for that. Especially so you don't dump it out on the floor or something. So the other parts you get, you've got some cables here. You got a little bit of hardware, got some clamps, got the exhaust port here, which will need to be assembled to that. And you have some exhaust tubing. Plus the fan, got a little grill, grill on it there, and these cables will enable you to operate the fan and everything, which we will get into. Okay, as you look at the, what they call the skeleton pieces, two of them are the same size, and then one is just a little bit smaller. So I am assuming that it's going to be the rear one, as they call for in here. So you're supposed to unfold the enclosure. I got enough room to do this here and insert the rear one first. Well, we got some zippers we're going to have to open up here to be able to get inside. So the rear one I'm going to let you watch me fumble through this. There are buttons in here. I'll show you up here because this is easy to show. There's buttons in here after your skeleton pieces go around there. You push these over and you snap them shut. You're not going to be able to see me do this clear in the back there. Okay, so that's the back one. Now we do the two side ones here. Hopefully you can see how this is operating here. It takes a little bit of uh, fussing around, but once it's in there, it, everything lines right up. Do the same thing here on this other side. 
The smaller one of these skeletons goes right here in front. And it also goes around with the ones that I just snapped here. So I'll have to unsnap those so I can get that in there and resnap them. Okay, next you've got two rods left. One will go right here on the front of your, I guess you'll call it a lid. That'll go right there underneath. This one will go up here to stiffen it, so I'll get those snapped in here. On the uh, front one here, there's a couple little Velcro tabs on the end to uh, hide the ends of your rods. I guess I could have unsnapped these, but this just seems easier just to slide it through there. There, like so. And we'll zip this together to see how it looks. There is a zipper on each side. And then there is a zippered opening on top right here. Which lets you see inside. So now I guess we'll be putting on the exhaust port. Okay, for the exhaust port here, you've got your port and your fan. And you'll want the guard of the fan to be towards the inside. This will go over the side that you would be putting your tube on. This whole thing then fits in from the inside. Like so. And then you'll have a screw and a washer. This is not as easy as you think it is. Trying to get everything lined up and not being able to see what you're doing. Be careful not to over tighten those screws because you can strip that plastic out if you do. You just need to get them in there snug. And if you hear a bunch of noise, we're getting a big thunderstorm right now. So you may be hearing some thunder there in the background. Well, there's your exhaust port. Okay, inside here are a couple of uh, straps here with snaps on them. Yet yeah, you'll see that's where you will snap your light. And I, it's going to be too hard to show that on camera, but it's just a matter of putting your light tube in there and have the wire off to that end. And then uh, just snap the snaps. Well, correction there, you actually want the wire going to the opposite side of the fan. Okay, the wire for the fan will uh, zip tie along your rods here and run over towards this side. Again, it's a little tough to try to show that in there. So you can just run that up and run it right along the rod up here. Okay, next you have a little wiring harness here. It's got two plugs on one end and one plug on the other end. Well, they're even marked light and fan. And they are keyed so they only plug in one way. It would be pretty much impossible to plug them in wrong. So I'll get those connected here. And then we need to tie this up and over and around and down the side over here. And once you've got everything tied in place, you can also put it behind the snaps. It makes it go pretty quick and easy to line things up. You can cut off all the tag ends. Here's a bit more wiring to do. This will go into another harness which then plugs into the laser. But what I need to do now is get my laser in here and I'm curious to see if it's going to fit on the baseboard or if I'm going to have to take it off the baseboard. We're going to find that out here real quick. Okay, it does fit with my baseboard on it. I had to disconnect my air assist there. Yes, it's dusty. It's a dusty shop. We work in here. This is going to be impossible to show because of the I have this on a baseboard. But on the back side of your laser on the corner where your Wi-Fi antenna is, there is a port for this right here. It's marked I.O. 
Now if you're using this enclosure on a different type of laser, you would use this cable here instead of the one I use, which then has a connection on here and you can go to here and it's got a little switch on it. And that would be if you're using a different brand laser with it. Uh, just because this is an Ortur enclosure doesn't mean you have to have an Ortur laser to use it with. So I'm going to get that little cable plugged in under there. Then there's a port over here on the side. Velcro closure. You can open up and I'll run my air assist hose out of there and I'll run my power cable in and USB cable, etc. Okay, all connected here. And I turned it on and it's bringing itself to the home position. Now I did not put the exhaust hose on here yet. I have to decide where I'm going to mount this. I may take this to the laser room upstairs in the loft. I haven't decided yet exactly how I'm going to do this. So we'll see how this operates and everything. I'll get this opened up in light burn. Okay, there's a couple commands you're going to have to add to the uh, laser here. And you can do it in the console and light burn. And I just tried both of them for the light and the fan to turn it on. And in here it says I need to upgrade the firmware version of my laser. So I am going to get online and download the new firmware. And I guess we'll be doing a firmware upgrade. Okay, once you upgrade the firmware, and I, it, it's pretty simple. I, I probably should have done a video on it, but we had a little wild storm activity here and the lights were blinking on and off. And I was really wondering if I was going to get screwed up here or not. So if you type in the console in uh, light burn, if you type M12 in, you'll turn the light on. M13, we'll turn the light off. Turn that back on. Turn on the fan as M14. And the fan's not too loud. I've got it running right now. So it's, uh, it's in the book here. It's pretty self-explanatory. It shows you how to do it. You can also do it in laser gerbil. Okay, so I got a little piece of MDF in there. Uh, that makes a lot of smoke, so this should be a good test for it. So we'll close this up here, zip things up. Okay, there are air vents on the side. There's grommets there, which lets air flow in. So I'll do a little bit of a quick fill here. This is looking through the window at the uh, on the top. And of course you close that for your more fireproof enclosure. We'll get into all the fireproof things here in a minute. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see the smoke coming out of there because it's uh, it is coming out though. It's doing a good job of uh, exhausting the smoke right here. Pretty good little airstream to that. I do not have air assist on or anything. It's just uh, doing a basic little engrave. You'll also see here on the side, there's a bunch of little uh, pockets you could put tools or whatever in. And on the other side are a couple of mesh pockets you could stash stuff in, which is where I'll probably keep my riser blocks. And this is tall enough that I could, you probably use a roller in there and, and put the riser blocks in. Take it up 100 millimeters real easily with uh, no issues and having space in there. So let's talk a little bit about fire safety. There's a fire extinguisher right there by the door. That's one of them. I have another one up in the uh, laser room in the loft. And I also have a very large one that sits on my be next to my workbench down here in the shop. Don't be without one. It's very, very cheap insurance. They're, they're under 20 bucks. So let's talk about what this does. It's if you would happen to get a fire inside there, it would contain it for a while. That doesn't mean you should leave your laser unattended. Always be, in, at least in the general area. I no normally operate my lasers without an enclosure because I'm shooting video and it's difficult to shoot video into an enclosure as you see here. However, this is good insurance if you should happen to get a fire in there. It should Shut the laser should shut down with flame detection, of course. But if something gets keeps burning in there, this will give you a little bit of a, a time frame to be able to get in there and extinguish it or take care of the problem without it spreading all over the place. 
Uh, this is a 100% enclosure. It's not like uh, one of my other ones that just sits over the top. This encloses at 100%. Of course, this uh, plastic up here is not really fireproof. I should say fire resistant. But when you close this and zip it shut, this material here, this is like the same thing a welding blanket's made out of. It will contain that fire for a while. Again, it, it won't put the fire out. It'll just kind of contain it. And if your fan happens to be running, you're going to be feeding air to the fire. So that's what I say. Always keep in the area and watch your laser. Doesn't mean you have to be right there and stare at it but be in the general area in case something goes wrong. Okay, so my project is finished. I can just zip this open again here. There's my little engrave there. It's just a cat silhouette. Of course, I didn't have air assist on, so we got a little bit of scorching there. But this does a great job of enclosing this. You can still see what's going on in there. So. I'll give this a thumbs up. So there's how to assemble and set up the enclosure for the Ortur Laser Master 3. You could also use the Laser Master 2, the Laser Master 1. You could put an Atom Stack laser in there, or Flying Bear, or Com Grow, or whatever brand you want to put in there. You just have to use the other wiring harness for the light and the fan, as opposed to the one that plugs into the I.O. Uh, with the Laser Master 3, I would assume with the Laser Master 2, if you're going to use the light and the fan features and plug into the I.O. port, you're going to have to upgrade the firmware, but it's not difficult at all to do. So, again, uh, Ortur did uh, provide this to me to uh, demonstrate and test here, and I'm probably going to keep the laser in it, or keep one of them in it. I don't know if it'll necessarily be this one, because I have quite a few different lasers, and I have to figure out where the home's going to be for this now. It may end up being in the laser room. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. There'll be a link in the description on where to get one of these enclosures. As you see, it's very easy to assemble. So I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.